Welcome to On The Point Podcast, a podcast for all things Overwatch with a heavy focus on League. Discussing roster moves, weekly matchups, and a uh, super play in Genji. Yeah, I saw that happen. I was giggling like an idiot the whole time at the fucking disrespect of that. I had to go back and rewatch that because that, that was a point when I was not able to watch it live. But oh my god, I definitely got the, oh my god, you guys, like, what, what, what? What? Oh, I was watching it You're with- You're not Rascal? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I was watching it with my teammates, and I'm like, the fact that they're doing this, like, I know Super plays it a lot and everything, but, like, at the level you're at in this game, everyone is pretty damn good at every role. Like, even if it was, like, Smurf playing DPS, he'd beat my ass like a drum, but, like, yeah. that doesn't mean you should play it in a professional setting, and the fact that- San Fran felt confident doing that against Boston is just such disrespect that I love it. Why would you not feel confident doing that against Boston, though, when you're San Francisco? I mean, yeah, but at the same time, like, it's one of those things of, like, it's true, but you shouldn't say it. <laughs> yee, yee, <laughs> and yet. And so, yet. I'm Katie. I'm the support main. I'm CJ. I was drinking at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking when I was waiting for watch. my. I was waiting for my cue. Um, yeah, I, I'm the the tank main slash coach now. Uh, and we're having a very good time, as you can tell. Yes. Yeah, who yes. does not drink for Overwatch? Unless you're underage. If you're underage, don't drink. Well, no, I was saying I. <laughs> <laughs> like when you were cueing me, I had my glass up against my lips, just like, oh shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when we record in different spaces and can't see yes. each other because the pandemic yeah. is a thing. It's real and it sucks ass. Yep. Such is life. Yep. Alright, let's talk about the week twenty-four results because Week 24 was either extremely one-sided or completely fucking bonkers. And there was no, there was very little in between there. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so starting things off, we had Vancouver Titans taking on the Paris Eternal. Paris Eternal keep up their winning ways with a 3-0 victory. Then we had a, uh, a Texas shootout, uh, Dallas Fuel versus Houston Outlaws. And the boys in blue pick up, I believe, their fourth straight win in terms of league play they did have the the show match that um houston won but other than that in official overwatch league capacity houston has not beaten dallas since 2018 and this was also dallas's first reverse sweep ever. yes this yes. hurt me a lot <laughs> watching this as an outlaws fan and going how did we how why no i mean i don't know this what you're talking about i thought it was spectacular um yeah because you're a dallas fan <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, Hangzhou versus Seoul. Hangzhou picks up the 3-0 win. Guangzhou charge uh, runs over the London Spitfire 3-1. Chengdu Hunters. Chengdu Hunters beat the NYXL 3-2. What was what was cracking me up about this? I was watching this earlier today because I tend not to watch the APAC matches live for reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh I was rewatching this today, and at the beginning, one of the, I think it was ZP, made a comment about, oh, the NYXL, they don't lose unless it's playoffs. And then this happens. It's I'm rare like, that you can dude. watch a statement, like, you've heard the phrase, like, that aged like milk. It's yeah. rare that you can see a statement curdle in real time. It was kind of amazing. It was Chengdu playing like crazy people, yeah. except in a good way. Yeah, no, it was like kind of what we want Chengdu, we, what we want from Chengdu based on last season. Oh, yeah. Chengdu is, last season Chengdu was fun to watch because they were just so bonkers and did their own thing. Yeah. It hasn't been working out for them this season until suddenly it does. And this is what I'm here for. Well, this I This mean, madness. I mean, a lot of it, like, they haven't even been doing it. Like, they haven't been pulling a Chengdu all that much this season. This like, is Like, they've been playing more standard and they just look worse at it than, like, almost any other team in APAC. Though, you know, they, they turned up. They turned yeah. up and they got that win. Sometimes you just have to embrace the madness. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes you just need to enter the uh, Chengdu zone. <laughs> yep. 
squeeze an orange over Bren's head and, you know, transcend reality. It reminds me of, um, there was a meme I made, like, the the first week of this season that was literally just the the bit in SpongeBob where they're ho- where SpongeBob and Patrick are holding up the orb of confusion and I just put the Chengdu logo over it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is uh Yeah. Yeah. That's why that's why we're here for them. Yeah. Chengdu was my favorite team during GOATS because they were just so completely ridiculously different. No, they're, they're like they were a ton of fun to watch during it, but it was one of those things where I was just like, I mean, they're not going to win. Like, <laughs> well, no, but you know, when you it, it, it's something, yeah. and now for something completely different. Yeah, no, and I appreciated them for that. Yes. Moving on, we have the Vancouver Titans versus the LA Gladiators, and LA pulls a three zero on Vancouver, and we're not terribly surprised by this. Uh, no. Not, not, no. not really. Uh, Gladiators no. kind of back in form, even though they've been up and down. We kind of expect them to win that matchup. Uh, Washington Justice take on Toronto Defiant. And I'll be real, I kind of had Washington in this scenario. Like, really? I definitely had Toronto after how well they played in the summer showdown. It was one of those things of like... I uh, Agilities can be very streaky and Tuba had looked good and it looked like Stitch and Janu were sort of implementing into the team more but watching this match was painful because they both played so fucking passively yeah like the thing is i know that you you know when you think of a brawl comp you think of like ryan hart and like azaria or a sigma and a lucio or a brigida or you know some shit like that but no um when you have the Genji, Arisa, and Brig right now, effectively what you're playing is a brawl comp. Well, and you couldn't have Arisa this week because of the hero pool. Yeah. And now, yeah, and you, you have Reinhardt in the mix, so there's literally yeah. no reason for you to play passively. Like, with Reinhardt, like, closing the gap and mixing shit up close range is what you want. So I yeah. genuinely don't know what the idea is of just like kind of just sticking in the neutral as long as possible. Because like I know that a, a lot of elements of this comp are basically the same as kind of the spam comp that was in place before the the Genji buffs. But the the fact is it's not a spam comp. Like it's a brawl comp. Well, and I have to wonder if they were thrown at all by May being out of the pool, because Tuba's got a solid May. I think so, but I would have him on Genji. Like, I, I wouldn't swap him off for that right now. Like, one, because Genji's so strong right now, and two, because Tuba has just been straight up fucking on Genji. True. Like, True. I I definitely, like, that. that's what I would try and, you know, sort of build my, my game plan around right now. Even though I think, like, obviously you want other members of the team to come in and pop off. But right now, Genji is kind of the most important hero in that composition. Until they figure out how to rebalance the madness. Well, the thing is, it wouldn't be so bad if they turned down his ult charge uh, when they gave him that damage buff. Because ultimately, Uh. the thing is, if the ult charge rate stays the same... And the amount of damage they can do goes up. The ult charge, you know, the the rate, the 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 time to ultimate also, um, well, it y- decreases. Your charging rate effectively goes up because you do more damage. Exactly. So unless you make that adjustment as well, ultimately you're giving a, a buff to his ability to build his ultimate as well. Yeah. And that's why, like, you see... When you'll see, um, it well in the summer showdown, and I think next week, uh, as well, not next week, but when we have the hero pools off, watch how quickly Genjis will charge their dragon blade. And part of that comes from them, you know, capitalizing on Arisa halts and just getting up close and just right clicking into tanks or whatever. But a lot of it comes down to how fat, like, one Genji's damage is way more consistent, and um just more than it used to be. And he also builds alt faster. So that's like your biggest win condition in the the sort of metagame right now. And obviously it's a little different with the, the bands, 
but enabling your Genji when you have him in the mix is one of the ways you're going to, you know, win. And that's, that's how Paris won the summer showdown. Yeah, pretty much. And it also helped that Sparkle is just a completely insane. Oh my Genji. God. Yeah. Like, uh, like obviously, that's, that's yeah. a helpful aspect. Oh, it, if it Super absolutely. is your Genji, you're not going to go far, but if Sparkle is your Genji, well, you say that, but San Francisco Shock picks up the 3-0 against Boston Uprising. Yeah, and, and we talked about, like, sure, we can move our Reinhardt specialist onto Genji. This this is a team where, at one point, the sub-in notification was Moth subbing in for Ons because Rascal went from support to DPS. So yeah. th- this is a team that is not unfamiliar with just doing a run what, what, what's it the cup game where you put the ball under the cups and you shuffle them around oh that. um the shell game the shell game thank you yeah i've got that mixed up with russian nesting dolls or which a three are completely card Mon- different thing or a three card monty which is effectively the same thing yeah regardless san francisco shock is not unfamiliar with you play this you play this now is cat yeah. now so- that being said by the like the the first map super was kind of quiet but by the end of it, he uh, was looking pretty good. Like, he honestly oh, wasn't yeah. looking bad. He, he looked he looked better on the Genji than I thought him to. Oh, yeah, I he's solid. But he's also solid against Boston. If they were going up against Paris, he would have been nailed to the wall every time. For sure. But I do think that he wasn't at a level where I... I wouldn't call it a throw. No. No, they, they, this isn't Chipsa. They don't throw. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wrong orange team. Uh, um, yeah, continuing on. Yeah. Uh, LA Valiant versus Atlanta Rain ends with the Atlanta Rain picking up a 3 0 victory. This hurt me. Yeah. Um, this hurt me a lot. Paris oh. Eternal versus Toronto Defiant is a 3 0 in favor of Paris. The Atlanta Rain then take on the Florida Mayhem, and Florida sort of gets back uh, to their winning ways with a 3 1. And then, so I'm just going to say it. This was the toilet bowl game this week, this next one. Boston Uprising versus LA Valiant. You continue to hurt me. I'm sorry, but... (laughs) You continue to hurt me. (laughs) Boston looked completely lost. I'm not sure their monitors were plugged in. Oof. Meanwhile, KSF on the Genji. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. He took three minutes and 28 seconds to build a dragon blade on Hanamura. Are That's... you fucking joking? Still not the league record. Yeah, but the thing is, <laughs> it's really close. I know. The AKM blade was three minutes and 45 seconds. He was 17 seconds off of an AKM blade. Yep. And he, and again, he's doing that against Boston. I have no idea what we were doing this week. I'm honestly just happy we pulled the win. (laughs) I was going to be very sad if we didn't, because what the fuck? Are we the gladiators? I just... Oh, it was yeah. like the- I was watching that and I was like talking with the other the other coaches on my team. And I'm by the end of it, I'm just like. This was pathetic. Neither team won this. I would disagree with that. <laughs> Valiant looked like they had their monitors plugged in. I'll give them that. Sometimes that's enough to get you three maps. Yeah, I, it's just one of those things that, like, I was watching this, and KSF was having... It, it took him the better part of two maps to get any kills with his Dragon Blade, because he didn't get any on the first map that I saw. I might be wrong, but I didn't see any in the kill feed. And then by the end of the second map, he got one kill with the Blade and one kill deflecting during the Blade. So we'll call it... Two maps to get 1.5 Dragon Blade kills in this meta. What? Nani fucking Sore? Well, 
Thank God we've got a week off. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I and I I like the thing is, I like a lot of the players on the Valiant. I really like Packing Ten, and he's someone that I look to um, in terms of like learning how to coach and studying the game and all that because I think he's an incredible. He's got an incredible mind for Overwatch. This was just bad. Like th- this was really not good. This was a season two, stage one Valiant. Yes. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, but Those are yeah, they pick up games to be at. They pick up the 3-0 uh, over Boston. And I, I think it was like, so shortly after the game, Punk on Twitter says something like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm going to look it up, but it was, yeah, no, what a fucking joke. Like, right after the game. Yeah. And it's one of those things that, like, I feel so bad for the Boston Uprising roster because there are so many players on that team that I think are legitimately really good. Oh, absolutely. But Boston has so many getting it together issues, and they have had all season. mm Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it doesn't help that they keep losing players to either te- to other teams or to scandals. Yeah. But, but or like, less scandals, more their own shitty behavior. It can be both, but it can't be both. It is. <laughs> the thing is, I think at this point we can officially say that minerals redemption arc is well and truly dead. Oh yeah. Um, it's, dead as disco like disco got a pretty good resurgence in pop a little while ago so uh we might need a new metaphor fair enough but like (laughs) the thing is you don't have a shitty roster they don't it's true i'd say fusions is maybe mid-tier in terms of the the hierarchy of overwatch league tanks punk has looked really good Jerry has looked really good. Myunbong, oh my god, he got destroyed in this matchup and it pisses me off because like when I see him in O2 Blast, he looked so good and it's just... And then here, he could barely make it out of spawn. I feel like just a, a lot of the players on Boston are worse for their participation in it to a certain to a certain level in terms of their their stock value and like just I, I'm not seeing what I saw out of Fusions or Myunbong or Punk like I'm Jerry is continuing to play well and I'm not gonna really you know say that he's better or worse for it because I'll admit I didn't really know a damn thing about him um but yeah, I don't know, man. Like, it, it's funny that despite, you know, we've kind of ragged on New York for being the choke artists. You you know who um, the, the XL are owned by, right? One of the, yes, but I don't remember. The so, same people who own the Yankees, I think? No, they're owned no. by Jeff Wilpon, the COO of the Mets. The Mets, that's, and he was one of them. Was yeah, close, he's, geographically. yeah. His dad's the the principal owner of the Mets, and he's the the COO. And which is why New York has ridiculous, just scads of money to burn. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Their um, team day at the league had no, they, they embroidered throw, hats and an ice cream flavor created by salt and straw. They and throw for those of you going, money. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And for those of you going, the fuck is salt and straw? Uh, Ridiculously high class ice cream. Super good. Known for doing crazy flavors. Like, unbelievably good. But, hey, ice cream company, can we pay you to make a flavor for us to come up with it and then make batches of it and come give it out at our team game? Sure. Like, what is even the financing for that? Probably a damn, damn pretty penny, but uh, it's just amusing yeah. to me that the owner of the Patriots has built the Mets of Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, if you think about it, if you look at, like, the New York Mets, 
they had so many players that looked infinitely better um like the second they were no longer playing at Shea Stadium slash City Field. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta look at the organization itself and go, what is the problem here? I think you gotta revamp the coaching staff and like I think that, you know, Huck might be great at scouting talent, but Right now, it just looks like their model is to, like, scout and bring in good talent on the cheap and then, you know, upsell them later on. And to me, that's just, it's not a sustainable model, and eventually no one's going to want to sign with you. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember which caster it was. I think it was a caster. I don't think it was Desk. But someone made a comment about how Boston seems like a farm team. Where you come into there, you play with Boston for a while, and then you get traded somewhere else. And the only one that I can remember falling through was Fusions was supposed to go to Valiant, and Valiant backed out of that at the yeah. 11th hour, which I'm still kind of like, really, guys? We got some good tanks now, but also we could have had Fusions? <laughs> Y'all? Yeah, it's just... Um... And he's still on Boston doing his best. <laughs> he's still on Boston, and he's, by God, he's trying. Poor guy. Yeah, it's... He's not, um, he's not the only OG Boston player who's still there, right? He's not OG. He wasn't there he's, in season one. Uh, okay, well. There this is, is why we have you, because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there is no member of the OG Boston squad still there. Legit. Because Dream Casper... He's gone. <laughs> Snow got released. Avast is now, you know, content creator. Kalios got released and then went on to play for Sky Foxes. I don't know what he's doing now. Mistakes is gone. Neko's gone. Striker's gone. Gomsu and Noter over on Dallas. K- Kellex is gone. Aim God is on Justice now. Um, yeah, there's there's nobody left. Huh. I mean, they're not the only team where this is the case, so it's not like, oh, Boston has no one from their original lineup left. I mean, I'm a Valiant fan. I don't get to throw things. Um, yeah, but, but it's yeah. one of those things of, like, Boston had a roster that did well. Like, well enough that you would want to keep at least some parts of the team, yeah. even if you were going to upgrade and drop others. Um, like... Say what you will about, you know, a roster like Dallas, but they kept parts that worked and tried to upgrade ones that didn't. Shock, same thing. Like, the only teams that really, like, blew up their rosters were guys like Seoul or Shanghai and then, you know, Valiant and Gladiators. I don't think they needed to, but they did. Um Vancouver, who definitely didn't need to, but did. Well, Vancouver didn't do that intentionally. They did it like... They, they did hit like the point assholes. where nobody wanted to be affiliated with each other anymore. It's not the team management deciding like, all right, we're going to you know take this back to straight hip hop and start it from scratch. It's like, no, no one wants to be involved with anyone anymore. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Vancouver management. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I actually pulled up the standings, and um, Washington is no longer our 20th seed. That's uh, that's Boston. Yep. Because, because Vancouver are, is a... What, 2 four, and 15 or 2 and 16? Uh, 2 and 15. Because Vancouver's that's at 4 and 10, Washington's at 3 and 14, and Boston is at 2 and 15 with a negative 37 map differential. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Washington, um, like Washington has problems. Boston doesn't have positives at this point. Yeah, this is, uh, you, you kind of look at our bottom seeds and just like, who are our bottom five? Houston, Chengdu, Vancouver, Washington, and Boston. And let's be real, Houston being in there hurts me, but I can't say I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. And the only reason they're below London is because London has a better map differential, having played four fewer games than them. Yeah. So we'll see how things go later because yeah. the APAC region has a few games to make up for. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, there's definitely, like, 
there is a lot that will be in flux going forward, but I think at this point it's pretty safe to say Boston and Washington are pretty concretely out of any hope of a good finish. Yeah. I mean, there's always play-ins, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't hold my breath. Yeah. Uh, anything else from any of these weekly matches we wanted to touch on? Um, because most of it, a lot of three zeros this weekend. Yeah, I will say zeros. It's kind of fun to see. Um, so I, I've talked about it a bunch, but like the the heart and soul of the current Paris Eternal roster in terms of their coaching staff and the majority of their roster. Um, is formed from Element Mystic, and they were known for playing like the what we'd call the hack fist combo of um, Sombra, Sombra and Doomfist. Doom so it was kind of cool to see them going back to that bread and butter in this new incarnation. That was kind of cool. Well, and they also had two opponents this weekend who, coming out of, coming off of beating San Francisco and beating Philadelphia in the Summer Showdown, and then going into facing off against Vancouver, Mm -hmm. who is very low seated, and uh, Toronto, who is doing better, but also still low seated. Like, they didn't have, (laughs) they didn't have too big of a challenge this week. No, but like, it was still cool to see them doing the things that got a lot of these players to the dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Paris is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I want to just say something, which is imagine back in the Contenders days, it used to be Sparkle and Doha doing the Hackfist DPS lineup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like I said, Element Mystic was a scary goddamn team. And, like, yeah. everyone in their lineup who made it to the Overwatch League is someone you are scared of. Makes sense. Because Doha, Exi, Hanbin, Sparkle, Repel, Pokepo, Daco, Jexay, uh, Guard over on London, Fearless. Yeah, so everyone. Yeah. And also the coach. Yes, and Rush, who is their coach. And so, yeah, and I, it, it was kind of cool to see that little bit of, um, I don't want to say nostalgia necessarily, because it wasn't that long ago, but it was just cool to kind of see them do the thing that they're famous for. When I didn't know if I was going to see that, considering all the different moving parts on this roster as it currently exists. Yeah, and I mean, you're allowed to be nostalgic for something that's not long ago. I'm nostalgic True. for January when we could go outside. So yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And now that I've hurt everyone, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Buy some cookies. You'll feel better. Exactly. And there's a new flavor of cookies too. Oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, as always, uh, this podcast is sponsored by Fred's BS breads and spreads by Fred. Uh, he's still doing cookies and stuff right now, and he's relocated, so things are, you know, a little different. But you're still getting brown sugar buddies. They are still some of the best damn cookies I have ever had. They are still incredibly good if you dunk them in your hot morning drink of choice, be it coffee or tea or hot cocoa or whatever it is you like to drink in the morning to get your day started. They are also still extremely good for ice cream sandwiches because they are chewy and soft and won't squish all the ice cream out the sides and make you sad. They will go with the ice cream and they are incredible. They taste like a cross between a molasses cookie and a spice cookie and joy. So brown sugar buddies, good thing to get for yourself. And he is doing a new flavor. It has been announced, but it has not yet been rolled out. Maple brown sugar buddies. Oh. Yee. Oh my fuck. So <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready yeah, it for didn't that. It sound like you were ready. <laughs> Dude, like again, my northeasterner heart is just like <gasps> Well, that's where he is right now. Well, yeah, I know. It's just it's just one of those things of just like that's just like a shot of fucking nostalgia to the veins. Like that's childhood shit. 
So it's that wonderful molasses spice cookie and also maple. So once I get my hands on those, I will give you my uh, review. But keep an eye out on the site. Those will go up for order, you know, at some point in the future. Things are a little wild. Welcome to pandemic. But yeah, if you would like to get yourself some brown sugar buddies, if you would like to treat yourself to something because cookies are amazing and you should absolutely get them. First, you should know that everything is fresh, never frozen. He makes all of these fresh. He makes them in small batches to help with those flavors. And you cannot find them in stores. You can only get them from Fred. So you go to fredhebakes.com, three words, fredhebakes.com. And you use coupon code on the point for 20% off your entire order. That is fredhebakes.com, coupon code on the point. Get yourself some cookies. You deserve them. Goddamn right. Get yourself some maple cookies when they are available because you deserve those too. Yes. All righty. News. Yeah. So let's get into that goodness um so signings trades and retirements we have baby bay retiring uh from the atlanta rain there were kind of rumors of another uh owl pro going over to valorant and people speculated it was him so we'll see how that you know pans out in the near future i don't think Um, he said one way or another what he plans on doing just that he's out yeah it's another one of those lost the passion sort of things yeah, and we'll see where it goes, but I would be surprised if he didn't end up uh, in the Valorant scene. Yeah. So up next, we have uh, Kodak retiring from play, Atlanta losing another. But, however, Kodak is kind of staying in the family. He's moving over to coaching. But this was Atlanta losing two players in the span of about a week. True, though the one thing I will say is that Kodak was just straight up not getting playtime. Legit. It it had been a while since I'd seen him on the line. Yeah. I actually met him at uh at BlizzCon last year, very briefly. Yeah? Yeah, it was just kind of a, a brief interaction that um well, you know, he was playing on uh on Team Germany. Uh and okay. uh, I think he was playing on Team Germany or he was there as part of like the Overwatch League's presence there, and I just kind of briefly passed him, and he was um, outside of the little arena where they were doing the um, Overwatch uh, World Cup stuff, just having a cigarette with someone else who I don't remember who it was, but it was a nice guy. Okay, it's it's nice to meet people and be like, oh yeah, no, they're good humans. We yeah, no, I, I met, ba- oh, I met been... Baby Bay outside of the arena. Oh last yeah. Season. Yeah, yeah, ran into him. I had a similar run in with uh with Banny. Yeah, oh Banny is fun. Oh Banny no, is a good human. He was a great guy, and it was after they beat Dallas, and I was out there with my Dallas jersey, and I'm like, so let's take a picture and you know, just like just, just <laughs> great game. Fuck you, but great game. <laughs> oh yeah, and no, I just <laughs> told this story before but i got the chance to uh interview him him mm-hmm. in fact at yeah. rtx years ago and it was great it was there they are two knowledgeable friendly human beings that were a lot of fun to talk to yeah for sure and i will say it kind of um makes me sad that fact uh we've lost him as a pro player and now he's uh on the uh the coaching side of things but that doesn't really surprise me though no, it doesn't surprise me much, and like I definitely think he's suited to it. But I think, but it makes me sad because I think he was better than he ever got a chance to be in Overwatch League. Yeah, this is true. Um, that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, up next though, it's not well. Let, let's go with the other departure before we get into the the pickup. Uh, London parts way with coach SMT, who was formerly known as Mayhem's uh, awesome guy. Huh. Yeah, no, I, I don't remember why he changed his name from SMT to awesome guy, but he... Um... To stop being associated with Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Not um... the team, just Florida <laughs> at yeah. all. 
Yeah, I don't. In any case, he was a uh, he was a an assistant coach for the uh, the team and is now uh, has now decided to step away. We don't know what comes next for him because that only happened like yesterday. Yeah, one of the few times where it happens before we record instead of after. Shocking how that goes. Yeah, for those of you wondering, uh, Wednesday, July 22nd. Yes. That's when this is going down. Yes. Uh, and up next, we have the pickup. Shock picking up Tayo uh, as a new DPS player for them, which I'm very excited about because one, first Japanese player we've had in the Overwatch League, and two, Tayo is one of those players who I've, like, ever since I saw him in the World Cup, because he's been a member of World Cup's Team Japan for three years straight, um, he was always one of the brightest spots on that team and one of the big names in Japan's relatively small Overwatch scene. And the dude, I think, is a, a ridiculously talented player. And so seeing him get picked up makes me happy. I th- I recognize that name. And I think it was because I did read an article at one point about Japan's Overwatch scene and the esports scene in general. Yep. And I think he was one of the ones that they were talking about, like working his ass off to get into the league. So, oh yeah, no, he he busted his ass for a very long time. Um, Didn't really play on any teams that you might have heard of up until. So he's playing for a team called uh, Jupiter, which is primarily, um, which is primarily, um, it's like half Japanese, half Korean in terms of roster. Although I, I think they're just kind of disbanded at this point. Um, ah. But yeah, um, but he got loaned over to Third Impact, which is a team in um, Contenders, Contenders uh, North Korea, and it's actually it's one of the it's a team that I think like is one of the stronger teams in the the region at present. Um, and they've had a few people that you'd know kind of come in and out through their uh, lineup, which is one, Apply, played for them for a, a little bit on loan from his team Revival. Uh, Kalios from the Boston Uprising and now um, off tank for Korean Contenders Champions uh, O2 Blast. He played for them as well. Um, Rob Dab, who has been sort of a T2 um, mainstay in Overwatch since like 2016, uh, back when he was known as Rob420. <laughs> yeah, and then they're like, well, you can't have name numbers in your uh, your name for uh, Overwatch League. So he's like, okay, fine, I'm Rob Dab, keeping the weed theme, but it doesn't have the same ring to it. Um, yeah, and I mean, you can't have numbers in your name <laughs> for the Overwatch League. No, you just can't well, have numbers can't... that are pronounced as numbers. Well, yeah, yeah. They, they, they have since rolled back on that. Um, Zeke, who's now on the Toronto Defiant. Um, and also, before he went over to Team Envy and later the Dallas Fuel, Oni God. Oh. Yeah, um, and so Tayo uh, played for them for a while. Um but yeah, watch his stuff in the course of um, the Overwatch World Cup, and you'll get a great sample of what Tayo can do. He's very good as a hit scan DPS, and he's also got a great Genji, which is, you know, something that I think this team needs. Yeah. D- <laughs> Super's not going to cut it. He's good, but he's mm-hmm. not, like, sparkle good. Yeah. And that's kind of what you need right now. Yeah, and Tayo is very, very good, and I think he's only going to get scarier with Krusty sort of teaching him what's what. Did you see the announcement photo that they yeah, did? Yeah, like, where Super's just, photo? like, glaring at him. Oh, yeah. Most of the team, it's a team photo with Tayo there. Yeah. And, it, like, three of them were wearing, uh, things that I noticed, because, again, we're, we're in pandemic times, like, three of them were wearing masks and the rest weren't. And I'm like, okay. Um cool is everyone all right but most of the team looking at tayo moth looking dead at the camera utterly deadpan and i'm sitting here going that is the epitome of the stop freeze frame yeah that's me bet you're wondering how i got here me yeah. like that's it really that is. it really i feel is. like moth is like the beleaguered dad of this team yeah like <laughs> 
Or no, I, Krusty's the beleaguered dad. Moth is the exhausted babysitter. Moth is like the older brother who has been helping run the family ever since mom either left slash died. If we're going by like sad sitcom tropes. Mom has extended hours at the hospital. She works a night job. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so... so the rest of the time, it's just these yahoos and Krusty going, I love my kids, I love my kids, I love my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way my mom used to do when the three of us would piss her off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, we've, we, we've adopted Tayo, and now Super never gets to play Genji again professionally. Oh no, I... whatever shall he do? I will say one thing uh, that was amusing to me is shortly after this, apparently Washington Justice had gone after Tayo, Kevster, and um, someone else, like right after Corey retired and got none of them and all. Who's the who's the third one? Let me look it up. I don't know, because obviously Tayo went to shock and Kevster went to the gladiators. Yes, so obviously the two of the, the two California teams might have had a little a slightly better recruitment pitch. Slightly better. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they they win more. Yeah, I mean, you kind of look at this and go, do you want to be a big fish in a small pond or do you want to be a medium fish in a medium pond or a medium fish in a winning pond? Like Big Fish Small Pond is, yeah, I'm a really well-known player, but I'm on a team that's not doing super great, which is the Washington Justice. Yeah. Um, oh, so apparently it was Tayo, Shockwave, and Kevster that they all... Um, John Galt tweeted, Tayo, Shockwave, and Kevster are absolute star players, smart, mechanically talented. Uh, Wiz, Banny, and, uh, Wiz and Banny scouted all three and approached me on acquiring them. Um... And, you know, Tayo's going to wow in San Francisco Shock. They couldn't get Shockwave? They got none of the three. Shockwave went to Vancouver, who had dumped its whole ass roster over the Justice? I well, I guess if you want a fresh start as opposed to... Yeah, I get it, but also... Ah, wow. Part of me wonders how much money... Like, we know that Washington has more in the the bank account than you would kind of expect them to, just based on, one, the production quality of their, um, home, stands. Of their home stands. And also, like, the, the casters and behind-the-scenes people are like, oh, no, they have a bank. But the thing is, if you're luring over Stitch and Janu, I feel like that's a lot of money that you're throwing at them probably yeah which means Especially, you might not have as much for other people yeah and the thing is like depending on how lulzish and ellie vote kind of left they might have had to buy them out of their contract like yeah. lulzish is still technically on the team even if he's on the in the inactive roster which means i think i as far as i know that means they're still paying him yeah probably and so you have Ellie Vote, who they might have had to buy him out. Um, Lulzish, who seem who is still ostensibly a member of this roster. And then you picked up Stitch and Janu, who have the pedigree as grand finalists. And you probably had to bid them away from other teams. Yes. So that potentially could have um hurt their opportunities to pick up other players in terms of just like how much cash they're able to throw at people. True. And also I wonder about it being reputation again, like, yeah, no, I, I don't think, for? yeah, I don't think their reputation helped. No. But the thing is like, if you're playing on a good team or a team that someone cares about, a lot of the time they'll be winning, uh, winning, willing to accept a smaller paycheck if it's important to them in some way or they believe in what you guys are doing or something or you know or you can take a look at the win rate the coaching staff what the coaches have to say about even the players that leave their team mm -hmm. because Krusty has had nothing but good things to say about the players that they've had to let go or the players that have yeah. been traded yeah for sure like you look at that and you go 
Yeah, no, that's that sounds like someone I'd want to work under. Yeah, for sure. And it's just, it, it seems like the rest of these situations are just a better opportunity than the Justice. Yeah. Well, congrats to Tayo for making it into the league and for making it onto the shock. Yeah, good on him, and I cannot wait to see him play. Yeah. Uh, I wonder you, how soon that'll be. I wouldn't... I Considering they had a team photo, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play at some point in the near future, especially considering their next... Well, they might not play him against Florida Mayhem. Um, They're up against the Titans this weekend. They're playing the Mayhem and then the Titans. They might not play him against the Mayhem, but I think they'd feel safe running him against the Titans. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. And I mean, mm-hmm. you you have Super, who is a good, solid Genji, but that's mm-hmm. not his focus. Or you have, but he is very much integrated with the team. Or you yeah. have Tayo, who, to my understanding, is a super good Genji, but may not be as well integrated with the team yet. So either which way, there's a balance. You just got to figure out which way you want to lean. Yeah, and I think it depends, you know, like on scrim results. If Tayo slots in oh, yeah. well, we can definitely see him there, especially because like, if you have Tayo and Ans, um, I think you'll probably overwhelm. That's scary. I think you'll overwhelm the Florida man. That's so scary. Tayo yeah. and Ans just ooh. Yeah, it's mean. <laughs> it's mean. All right. Well, we should move on to. They did name this last time. We just couldn't remember what it was called. Yeah, the, the Countdown, Countdown Cup. Cup. Because it's not named after a month or a season, and therefore it didn't stick. Yeah. So I wrote this down as the countdown cup, but I think it was more of the, uh, I don't think this is the regulations for the cup. I think this is the regulations for the finals. The, yeah, for the finals. Yeah. So, so the countdown cup is going to be as normal like we've had for the other two. But the finals are going to be a little different. They are splitting once again into uh, North American and APAC regions for playoffs. You have single elimination play-in matches for the lowest seeded teams, and then a double elimination bracket overall. And then the top four teams, two North American, two APAC, are going to compete in a double elimination bracket for the championship. And we are going to have some delay, several weeks delay, before the semifinals and finals, before that final bracket, because the North American teams will be traveling to Asia and will need several weeks for logistics, health regions. Again, we're, we're in a pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, two weeks of quarantine before you can do anything. Yeah. So, yeah, this, I'm not surprised that they went for this. I will be surprised if they are able to get two American teams into I'm assuming probably South Korea, but really any Asian country, because if we lean on politics a little here, um, America does not have its shit together for COVID-19. And I think most, if not all Asian countries do. So um, trying to get an American... Most in the world are having a yeah. better response than us. So trying to get an American into a country that isn't Britain is kind of a, it's kind of a fool's endeavor right now. So I will be, I won't like I won't be surprised if they can work this out because it's for a sporting event they have money yeah. etc cetera, etc cetera. That, that was going to be my counterpoint is the money Yeah that's that's going to be a part of it and I think also just like they're here for this we're already established here this is part of what we're doing and we can vouch that they had tests before they traveled here that they yeah. this like having all your ducks in a row So I wouldn't be surprised but I'm still just kind of like, oh, I'm sure I mean, probably, this is going to be in September. Yeah, and I'm sure they're probably, like, laying the foundation for this in terms of the paperwork and the logistical side of things. Like, I'm sure they're working on it now already. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, you give yourself a month and a half for the large scale things. And then that two week delay for no, here's the teams who will be coming. Here's all the paperwork for them. Here's the passports. Here's the whatever. Here's their COVID tests. Yeah. And I'm sure that they're going to be preparing in any eventuality of like, okay, here are all these people. We'll, you know, keep you abreast of any developments with them, all that shit. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not surprised that because of the global nature of, well, 
you know, this season was supposed to be everyone goes home. And then, yeah, everyone goes home and then they can't leave. Uh, <laughs> yep. So I'm not surprised that there is travel built into the grand finals. Um, I'm just a little surprised that it's come in this form, but nobody expects the COVID inquisition. So here we are. Yeah. And I think this, like, if you're trying to, like, make this happen in something resembling the way you kind of had in mind before all of this, this makes sense as a way to try and do it. Yeah. So I will be interested to see how this goes. And just throwing this out there right now, and I know there's so much room for change, but throwing this out there right now, who I think our top four are going to be, Shanghai, Guangzhou, San Francisco, Paris. Yeah. I think Philly has the potential to play spoiler and maybe squeak in, but those teams, I think, are definitely the ones that we're likely to to see there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe Philly does, but I don't think Shock is going to let that shit happen again. No, but my question (laughs) is, if the meta shifts and Genji is out of the mix, like, how does that affect Paris? Because Paris Paris is is definitely good, but... Right now you have a metagame where their two biggest carries in Sparkle and Xy are both able to just run fucking wild on the majority of maps on their comfort picks. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see how that affects things. And I mean, God knows how the meta is going to change before then. It's a month and a half from now. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my point exactly. Like, if things change, we, we don't know how it'll affect people. And some teams have definitely proven better or worse than others at adjusting their play style or using their various different pieces to adapt to things. True. And Philly is still our uh, top-rated North American team yeah, at 17-2. And- and yeah, and I think, like, right now, like, with Carpe and EQO, they can go toe-to-toe with just about anyone in the, 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 the meta composition. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see Philly uh, make it to a finals again. See how that goes. Absolutely. And I think, like, right now, they are the strongest they've ever been by far. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. It's like gone by, from just the Carpe carry and whatever else to the Carpe and also so many other good players on his team. It's no longer one human bringing the whole team along. Yeah, and they're also just playing together as a unit way better than they ever did previously. Oh, yeah. So this, that, we'll, we'll see if those predictions change by the time that tournament comes around. But we still yeah. have the Countdown Cup. We still have two more weeks of regulation play before that. Like, that's looking way into the future. Oh, yeah. But- like, right now we're in a position where we, like, this is like looking into a crystal ball. There's no guarantee, like, any of what we say will pan out. I mean, I've said this before. Like, we're not prescient, but we have pattern recognition. Yeah. Shanghai and Guangzhou have been running train on pretty much everybody. New York has the potential to play spoiler, but no one else in that region does. Not yeah. the way things are. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. And that's, and I mean, no, I don't think San Francisco is going to make it to the tournament is kind of a sucker bet. So, we'll see. We'll see. And I think before we go into our predictions for this week, I want to talk about our continued nailed it audition videos. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I, I was a little disappointed with Mr. X's. I mean, I think he did a fine job at the cake. I think was, he did a fine Trogdor fan art on top. Yeah. No, I was going to say it was definitely Trogdor and not the San Francisco, not the San, the San Francisco, Francisco, the Shanghai Dragons look. The, yeah. Well, it's definitely not the San Francisco Shock. I, yeah. But, you know, it was... I think the thing is that video was just okay. There wasn't a lot of ridiculous entertainment value in yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't... He made a cake. It wasn't impressive or embarrassing in the way that all of the other videos in this series are. 
So in because... my mind, it was the least entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like he had a pretty solid cake, and we didn't have anyone else there to vouch for the flavor I mean, for it. So. Yeah, I'll I'll be real and say that like his technique and approach, like as someone who does a lot of cooking and admittedly less baking, but like still my fair share, I'm just kind of like, all right, buddy, come on. Like it was very much the I'm following the directions on the box. Yeah. Um, but if he wanted to win the making a cake that's not embarrassing competition, yeah. like, that's a good way to do it. So Mr. X's video, well, all of these other videos I've watched multiple times, Mr. X's video was just okay. It's, it's not there. great entertainment value, and it's not going to get him onto Nailed It as an audition tape. So it's just kind of, you made a cake, buddy, and you drew a good Trogdor. Yep. We appreciate you. Yep. Sideshow's cake, I believe I described it as a garlic travesty. <laughs> uh, yeah, which... I'm so happy. The thing is, like, <laughs> this is what I expect from Sideshow. Um, oh, yeah. But, like, the thing... The thing is, the moment he mentioned garlic, I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> because here's the thing. If you're, if, if you're a cook... You know that roasting or sautéing or in other ways, like heating garlic, causes the flavor to express. So basically, by putting the garlic in the cake and then baking it, you were guaranteed that garlic flavor amplifying over cooking time. <laughs> I just, why would you, okay. So th things I appreciate about this, for one, That's I appreciate the visual. I appreciated the visual pun. For the reference, having the cock on the crotch of underwear, like I appreciate that visual pun. Yes, a lot. It's very stupid, and I love it. Um, I appreciate that he went for a shaped cake. Yeah, I appreciate no, that I... he actually tried it. Like, if it hadn't been for dumb flavor shenanigans, he would have been my vote to win. For trying to dye the cake different colors, for actually you know doing what? relatively even layers, for doing a shaped cake, for not making icing that looked like a brain in a blender. For, you know. I still like... don't know what the fuck he did to that frosting. <laughs> Poor reinforce. I don't like... know. Like, I, I, do I genuinely appreciate. don't know. Um, but I yeah, Sideshow it, took yeah. chances. He went I... in, he swung for the fucking fences. In ill-advised ways, but he, <laughs> by God, he did it. I appreciate his long-suffering girlfriend, who is yes. a very wonderful, competent human being, just sitting back and letting it happen. Like, there yeah. was no... Because Reinforce involved... I cannot remember her name. I know he said it on camera, and my brain is a sieve. Reinforce involved his lovely, wonderful girlfriend who was a videographer and knows what she's talking about. Like she was involved in the process. He asked her questions. She gave him advice. Like that, there was a teamwork aspect to this that I appreciated. Oh God. Yeah. Although like the thing is, I really appreciate just letting sideshow just go like, Oh, oh no, yeah. I'm here to film and adjust a little bit of frosting at one point, but you, you gotta, dude, you're, you're on your own. You've got to let Josh run free, man. I also um, appreciated videotaping the cat, whose name is Figgy Smalls. Over <laughs> Figgy with an F, Smalls. Figgy, Figgy, Figgy. Figgy Smalls. What a good kitty. I love it. Yeah. I do. Um, yeah. I, I yeah. appreciated the chaos. It was beautiful. And I oh, loved yeah. it. And, that's, and that's, that's what you go to Sideshow for. Because, like, have you ever watched any of his YouTube videos of him playing ranked? Because it's fucking hysterical i have not no there's one moment where like there's one clip where it's him bren and a bunch of their like sort of ranked friends and they're about to um they're about to like full hold on volskaya and get the win and he's like okay i'm gonna fire the grab up into the air it'll come down as they're trying to push through choke and everyone's like no um <laughs> It's like, no, no, I'm going to do it. It'll come down in 15 seconds. He fires it up. And 
fires it up, Agon, Bogotovnosti, and it flies up into the air. And then the enemy team just waits, the grav hits, does nothing, and then they charge through and murder the whole team. And it was only worse because the tracer on their side had pulse bomb. Like they had alts to combo with the grav and it happens and you just hear Bren shout, you're a fucking idiot, Josh. And then leaves the game. (laughs) And then he comes back later and he's just shouting, why would you fire it into the air? They can hear you. You fire it into the air. You shout out in fucking Russian, in fucking Russian. (laughs) Like, he's losing his mind. It's so good. (laughs) And people think that bronze matches are wild. They are, but not like that. No, no. (laughs) You're in plat. You should know better. Oh, no, he's in diamond. (laughs) See, that time I was drinking and I nearly lost that all over my keyboard. Yeah. Oof. Christ. Uh, okay. Anyway, predictions. I just I I don't know if Soe ever chose a winner. I don't know if there is a winner in I this. I mean, the winner is Soe for that fucking uh photo shoot of her with all the fucking like sponsored food and shit. Oh my god, like of the House of Pringles wavy first of her name and the whole gown and the Jesus. I wasn't kidding when I said so I was a renaissance woman. She can yeah. do anything. Oh yeah. Anything. Th- yeah, and Becca and I saw that and we're just like, that's not fair. <laughs> it was know, just like right? our immediate response. It's just, that's not allowed. That's not, you You can't do that. That I, I have a number of friends who occasionally just pull out things like that. And I'm like, how do you even have that in your wardrobe? Yeah. Where did you find that location? I don't have to ask who took the photos. I know who took the photos and he's a very talented human being. Mm-hmm. I, 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 photo, actually, I actually met him shit. once very but... briefly uh, when I was working at the Hollywood Bowl. Cam? Yes. He's good people. Yeah. If you're in LA and you need a photo shoot done, Cameron Rice, he's he's good. Uh, yeah, so it's, I, I I see my friends pull this out and I'm like, you know, I know you as a person and I kind of see where this comes from. And then I see, so I pull it out and I'm like, no, no, that's not that. How, 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 oh, I do have a thing that I wanted to talk about and I forgot to put it down in the notes, the Boston and Valiant match. The uh, Comfy Couch cast. Oh, I love it. It actually drove me crazy. Really? I hated it so much. Um, Part of it's because I... Those of you who have followed me from other things know I was a host on After Buzz TV. You have four hosts talking about any given thing. And you need people who can work well together, who can take cues from one another. And when you go off of having two people and you start having more than two, you need a person who can lead, who can cue people in, who can yeah. cut to things. Like you don't necessarily oh, it need was a producer, definitely but lacking you need a that. lead host. It was definitely lacking that. And I will not pretend otherwise. The, the only, the, the thing is, is though, it reminded me of some other esports tournaments where they adopt that kind of chill format. And it was like, I feel like Bren and Jaws were in on the, we're just sitting here, we're memeing, we're having fun. And Jake is trying to do an actual cast. And they're just like, oh, we don't, like the the, the different elements never quite gelled. Well, and the other thing is this, I kind of went a little crazy when they had Spice on to help with the cast for one of the maps and one of the matches a few weeks back. That made mm-hmm. me wild. Because the thing is, I can't always sit down and eyes glued to the screen do Overwatch League for eight hours. I do a lot of, I'm baking, I'm doing this. I have my phone over here, but I have it on a detached speaker in a different room. Like, I multitask a lot when I do Overwatch League. And so I rely a lot on the casters doing a good play-by-play. Yeah. Which is why when Achilleos used to cast, I would go, I believe it was Achilleos. He's no longer with the league. He's doing other oh, stuff. No, Achilles is still with the league. You mean Samler? Not Achilles. Um, who am I thinking of? Samler. Sa- thank you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Losing my mind. 
when Semler used to cast, he would do color commentary, but he wouldn't actually tell me what was going on. So if I was going into something where it's like, all right, you know, I'm driving for an hour. I'm only going to be listening to this match. And it's like, oh, it's Semler. And I'm like, I'm not going to have a fucking clue what's happening. So I rely a lot on the cast. And so having this couch cast where Jake, God bless him, is trying to do his job and the rest of it is just uh, between the crosstalk and the not actually telling me what's happening. I went a little nuts. Like it's a yeah. great, it, it, it's, if it was, I would love to see them do this over VOD. I would love to see them yeah. do this for anything else. But as an actual Overwatch League cast, it drove me fucking bonkers yeah and if you watch like sideshow or avast when they're doing a companion stream that's a lot of what you would see the thing is like there have been tournaments in the past in both overwatch and other esports scenes that have adopted the more sort of like chilled out format that they were trying to do there i just yeah it it, it wasn't implemented well and i think jake was still trying to do the the normal cast whereas they were doing the more like memeing and having fun thing and it didn't quite gel i enjoyed yeah. it because i was sitting watching it and just you know having fun in that regard um but i can definitely see where you're coming from i mean i was also just sitting and watching it i, mm. I my roommate puts up with my bullshit and lets me put it on the big screen when there's a match that I care about. And that's usually Valiant matches. So that one I was sitting down and watching and just yeah. going, the, the crosstalk, I think, was the big thing that really uh -huh. got to me. Just from having done and having been a lead host and knowing, like, this is this is a gel issue. This is a problem. Not everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Like. I went yeah. a little crazy. <laughs> oh no, trust me. Like that, that aspect of it did kind of drive me nuts to a certain extent, but it's like, it's not something I'm worried about in sort of a couch cast scenario. Yeah. Like also, I, I, I think my previous experience with it, like my brain just sorted it into a different category. Also get jaws a lav mic for the love of God. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I completely, ah! agree. no <laughs> arguments there. <laughs> I had just spent a lot of time screaming about how he needs to eat his mic. And I, I think I had a friend make a joke about, well, no, it's, you know, it's, it's not a Pringles wavy. He doesn't need to eat it. And I'm like, no, but he needs to put it next to his mouth. Yes. You, you have to, it has to be close enough for it to, I know he's not used to holding a mic, but oh my God, like again, that and the crosstalk and the not actually telling me what was happening. I, I spent a lot of time in that cast just being like, oh my God. <laughs> so I yeah. appreciate the effort, but I don't think the execution was there. No, it wasn't, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Oh yeah. And I'm sure it'll be back for some of our yeah. less intensive games. <laughs> the, the steal from Avast for the toilet bowls. <laughs> yeah we've got at least one of those this week possibly we'll see shall we get so, into predictions and uh we shall get into predictions all right keeping in mind that the hero pool this week is also widowmaker may orisa anna yes uh so first up atlanta rain versus boston uprising atlanta atlanta <laughs> watch um, boston takes the first map and everyone sits here and goes shit now what <laughs> just a moment of Nani. <laughs> We're either going to be breaking some patterns here, or we are looking at a really big upset. If, if that happens, I just like just somewhere in the back of my brain, Huck just goes, "Oh my, Wamo, Shindeiru." Like I don't think Boston can pull it off, but I would oh, love no, to see I them think. take a map just to make everyone extremely just worried. Just for the moment of, oh no. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What? Uh, ah! a, a match we actually do expect to be competitive. The Florida Mayhem versus the San Francisco Shock. I'm going Shock. Same. And these are our Friday matches, because we're back to playing on Friday again. <laughs> Blast yeah. from the past. And then, up next, we're going over to APAC, starting off with a series that no matter what you predict, you will be wrong. The Soul Dynasty versus the Chengdu Hunters. I don't even know what to think. 
I'm, this is a pair of up and down teams, and Seoul beat New York. La- not Seoul. Chengdu beat New York last week. I'm going Chengdu. I think I am too. I'm. I. You know what? I'm on this crazy train. Let's go. And to be fair, Seoul has inspired confidence very intermittently. And even if they get the win, I'll be like, all right, reset the clock. <laughs> like, we basically have two teams that are a giant Kanye shrug. I, I was just going to say, you could just say Kanye right now because no one knows what the fuck is going on with him. Uh, this is uh, Kanye needs help. I, he doesn't well, need a presidential I, campaign. He just needs help. No shit. Um, anyway. Up next, NY, uh, Shanghai Dragons versus London Spitfire. I think we're going to see the Shanghai Dragons. Dragons. One other one here. Yeah. Up next, NYXL versus Guangzhou. Guangzhou. This will be an interesting rematch, I think. It, it depends which NYXL shows up, because the thing is, like, this season, they definitely haven't looked as smooth and polished as they have in the previous two seasons, regardless of who they're running. This like is they true. Definitely don't seem as quick to adapt or that they like get it on the same level uh, that they used to when it comes to playing a different metagame. Which is wild because NYXL used to be our unbeatable team. Well, the thing is, NYXL has definitely had a lot of changes, not just in terms of their roster but they've also had a lot of coaching changes just over the course of their existence because their head coach for the first two seasons Pavain he's gone Zet who was a uh, an assistant coach for season two he's gone Wizard Hyung who was one of their who was like their strategic coach for season one he's gone and I think he's actually over with uh, Seoul now huh um so, but yeah, my point is a lot of the, like, behind the scenes energy of this team isn't there. And like, so they still have some members of the, you know, the, the roster of the, the roster there, like IMT, who's currently their head coach. He's been a coach for them um, since you know, the end of the the 2018 season. Uh, Why not was previously a coach for O2 Ardeant, which is a precursor to O2 Blast, and then Seoul, and now over to NYXL. And uh, Garincha, who is their strategic coach now, uh, joined with them for the, the 2019 season. Before being... So it's the behind the scenes changes that are shaking things up there. Hypothetically, like I, I, I think that could possibly be part of it because like the thing is, IMT prior to working with the NYXL, as far as I can tell, didn't have any prior coaching experience, um, which although it's interesting, like because if you look into him, He's actually got a background in neuroscience and artificial intelligence. Huh. Yeah. So, like, that's kind of the angle that he approaches, like, strategic uh, thinking from. But, you know, so he's relatively untested outside of his tenure with the NYXL. Why not was with Seoul for the, you know, the the ass end of the 2018 season through the 2019 season, neither of which I would say were resounding successes and did have a lot of up and down, even though I think 2019 was okay for soul. Um, and then Garincha was all is also a relatively new addition to the team. And previously he was a, a coach for X six gaming and sky foxes, both of whom like, so X six, like they did very well in their initial like run early in sort of the pre overwatch league era and then did well in like the first season of contenders they competed in, uh, in like season one in 2018, but then never really did anywhere near as well after that. 
And Sky Fox's is such a revolving door of players and coaches that I genuinely don't know how I could approach that in terms of like a cohesive, like who did what. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. Let's see how many, how many players Sky Foxes has had in their existence. Let's just, let's just go through that. They have one active player left on their roster because they just released a bunch of people under sort of I Weird think, circumstances. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. I was kind of wondering if we were going to break 100 there. They have gone through... 76 different players over the course of their existence. Overwatch has been out for four years? And Sky Foxes has existed for two of them. Jeez. <laughs> so, you know, that's a solid average of uh, 38 players a year. You could literally, assuming that you were just doing seven people minimum, you could, if, if seven's the minimum, you could field 10 Overwatch League teams out of the people who used to play for fucking Sky Foxes. Just make the Sky Fox League. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And like, some of them have genuinely done some, you know, impressive shit. Uh, Jaru, he used to play for Sky Foxes. Uh, Swimmer used to play for Sky Foxes. Oh. Verbo briefly played for them after uh, he got dropped by uh, Valiant. Kalios played for them for a bit. So did Snow after he gets dropped by um, by uh, Boston. Who Are You played for them for a bit. Lastro played for them before he got picked up by the Valiant. Um, Asking played for them for a bit. Car Car played for them. Um, it, it's just... A ridiculous amount of people have had some sort of affiliation with this team. We've kind of lost the thread a little bit. <laughs> my my point that I that, that I was on before we went down this rabbit hole is we have a lot of behind the scenes changes from the sort of intellectual DNA of the team between season one and two, and I think the biggest you know change in that is that Pavane is not there. Because Pavane was the head coach of LW Red and LW Blue, the teams that would sort of like a lot of them would combine to become the NYXL since 2016. Um, he had been a part of this roster's formation and organization for about three years uh, before he ended up going over to London Spitfire. So we really did lose a backbone when we lost him. Yes, I, I think that played a big uh, played a big part in things. And then you also have um, Andrew Kim, um, who was their player manager going over the gladiators. Like you you've just lost a lot of components of the behind the scenes aspect of this team. So I think that maybe that has um, at least some part of, why this team's kind of up and down, especially because IMT is, you know, clearly a very smart guy, but this has been his only Overwatch League coaching job. Um, why not has coached some very inconsistent teams as as has Garincha. Right, so that, you know, that wouldn't really surprise me because if we want to point to the the back end, causing issues for teams again i would like to point to the season two houston outlaws who were that writ large mm -hmm. but 
It doesn't surprise me if the back end's in upheaval or have had massive changes that that would affect the team. Yeah, and I, I think it's changed a lot. And I think Pavane is a very good coach because, like, while his teams, you know, haven't won championships, he consistently gets them within striking distance. And, like, under his leadership, the NYXL had the best record in the inaugural season, like regular season, he won an Overwatch World Cup for South Korea. Um, like consistently, he gets you within like striking distance of that big win. So ultimately, like, I, I don't know what, you know, he may not get you there, but at least he has the result of delivering a team that can get you the majority of that way. Okay. So, regardless, I do think Wong Show is going to win this one. Um, I want NYXL to win because they have such a ridiculously talented roster and I want them to do well, both for just, like, I like a lot of these guys and also because, you know, New Yorker. But, yeah. Wong Show is just looking like a slightly more consistent team at this point similar slightly strength is, level uh, more consistent slightly is very generous <laughs> anyway well, you next, know me i'm very generous on this podcast <laughs> up next san francisco shock versus vancouver titans san francisco man remember when that would just be the showdown of the year oh, don't fucking remind me mm, yeah san it's francisco still- definitely <laughs> There's still clips of me that show up in some Vancouver hype packages. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Believe me, I know. They've got some very good clips of you being very excited, and uh, they didn't change their colors over the season, so they're going to keep using them. Yeah, they can keep on using them. All those clips Um, of me cheering for the Valiant are in the garbage bin because they're all in green. (laughs) Yeah, though they do use a lot of the green clips all the same. I wouldn't be surprised to see stuff pop up. They've mostly just used stuff from the two home stands that yeah. keep, well, more than two, but the ones that Valiant was at because, you know, the actual correct colors now. Yeah. Not the good um, colors, but the correct colors. Yeah, I'll, I'll be real. The blue and yellow, I don't, I don't like it as much. It's like, I don't dislike it as much as I did initially, but it's still. It was still a bad decision that they should not have done. Yeah. And like, good night, I everybody. <laughs> I think season two, they just kind of hit where they should have stayed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, So, moving on. Florida Mayhem versus Washington Justice. Um, The battle of everything that's fucking up America right now. Jesus Um, Christ. (laughs) Florida. This has basically been, let's make political jokes, the episode. I don't give a fuck fuck i've run out of like i've run out of fucks to give uh i agree though florida up next boston bossington uh boston (laughs) uprising versus the dallas fuel oh dallas Um, definitely dallas (laughs) not even close um (laughs) like it's only if it was like washington versus boston that i'd be like okay we could see something somewhat competitive here but it's It's a rematch of the play-in match for the summer showdown ladies and gentlemen the toilet bowl (laughs) ladies and gents this is the moment you're waiting for anyway um so the gladiators i will give that to philly yeah, same. Gladiators have just been consistently inconsistent, and that means you can't really peg them down anywhere, and uh, Philly's doing really well. Speaking of consistently inconsistent, the Chengdu Hunters versus the Hangzhou Spark. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm, 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 This is the coin flip for me. This I... is the only one where I'm like, I can't decide. I'm grabbing a coin right now. Yeah, I think I will, too. I kind of appreciate that so, we've gotten to this point yeah. where it's like, what are we going to do? All Chung right. Du, Tales of Spark. Okay. I'm Chung going Spark. And I'm going for Chengdu. Right. <laughs> so we have opposite sides because the coin knows all. The coin knows yeah. nothing. No, it doesn't. I mean, 
as well as the rest of us. Uh, up next, Shanghai versus Seoul. Shanghai. Shanghai. <laughs> up next, LA Gladiators versus the Paris Eternal. Paris. Paris. This this is a rough week for the Gladiators going up against the two finalists for the previous tournament with yeah. the same meta. Yeah, buddy. Um, so after that, we have the equally, I think, ill-fated matchup of the Toronto Defiant versus the Philadelphia Fusion. Philly. Yeah, the, if Toronto takes a map, I will be pleasantly surprised. Meanwhile, closing things out, Washington Justice versus the Houston Outlaws. Houston, goddammit. Oh, absolutely. That I just... I, <laughs> uh, after that throwdown with Dallas, yeah. I do think that Houston can do this. And I think Houston is absolutely capable of learning from that throwdown with Dallas and also of studying how Washington has been doing and what they would lean towards in this sort of meta. Oh so. yeah. And like I've been outspoken as saying like in terms of just the quality of their roster, I think this is genuinely the strongest the outlaws have ever been. Um, I think they're going to, I think they're going to win this. I hope for Washington's sake as well as Toronto's, that both of them in their matches this coming week play a little more aggressively and confidently than they did uh, against each other last week. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, the thing is, if you seed, um, like, so both teams ultimately played really passively in their game against each other, but if you're playing passively against a team that will take initiative, you're fucked. Like yeah. the thing is, if the if you're fighting into someone else's rhythm, whether it's Overwatch or boxing, you're gonna get checked on the chin a lot. Yeah, because you're letting other people dictate the flow of battle. Exactly. You can't do that. And like it's different if you have the the intelligence and discipline that like letting them take the initiative, you know, like if you do what NYXL did in the first two seasons, it's not necessarily a problem, even though I would say that more aggressive is definitely the better way to play. But if you're like going up, if you don't have that level of discipline and strategic understanding and preparedness, to receive the enemy aggression and like turn it back on them. Like it's fucking judo. Um, you're not going to benefit from that approach in any way. Yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't, I would think that NYXL is about the only team that is capable of doing that. And that's why they've been so damn scary. Yeah. And that, and that's the, the thing it's like, if you notice, like, in the history of Overwatch League, the teams that have done well are the aggressive ones who will take it to you and play well off of that initiation. Like, if you look at Season 2, like in the GOATS meta, which, you know, I know it's not everyone's favorite, but the Shock in Vancouver did not give their opponents a second to breathe. And Bumper just... cornering. Bumper cornering. Yeah, just... no, like, it's... To, for, for those of you who are fans of MMA, there's a fighter by the name of Justin Gaethje who, like, up until recently, his whole thing is he just walks forward just and just keeps walking at you like he's the fucking Terminator, just swinging haymakers until the fight's over. That's what Vancouver did. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so this is a... Uh... You need to be a little more active or you will get run over. Yes. And the thing is, if you can maintain that level of aggression and not make mistakes your opponent can capitalize on, you know, it'll, uh, you'll be happy. So I think when you have, for these two teams especially, you've got really strong players in this meta in the form of tuba and uh, agilities. Like, if you enable them and let them pop off, and keep playing aggressively and buy them space to do things and follow up when they're going in, you will do better for it. So fucking do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. I do think Washington has a better chance of beating Houston than Toronto has of beating Philly. Generally uh, speaking. Agreed. Agreed. But I would still like to see Houston come out on top. Yeah. I um I, I, I think Houston will win this, especially because, you know, they've kind of got shit to prove after losing the, the match to Dallas. And an incredibly close match, too. A very, very close match. So yeah, so that's that's where we stand looking at three days of games next week. Yeah. Dad, remember when we used to have four days of games per week? Remember I that do. madness? I do. I miss it. I do too. I mostly I miss, just miss, I miss it being, being able down to, the street. Yeah, I miss being able to go there and just watch it. Yeah. Pony up $30, park my ass in the chair, and have some of the best onion rings I've ever had in my life. They were um, really good. They were so good. This this has been your Blizzard Arena Nostalgia Corner. Uh. <laughs> it happens every once in a while. Like the thing is, it, it was does. close enough that I was um, that I was able to walk there from my old apartment than I did on more than one occasion. Yep, and my new job is around the corner from where it used to be. So it's like, are you kidding me? I could have been this close the whole time, and now it's closed, and I'm here. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> but that is life. So yeah, yeah that's I, I. I think wrapping with the nostalgia corner is a good way to go. I, I feel like that's the zone a lot of people live in um, right now, just because of the pandemic and all that. Just like remember when we used to be able to like live and have fun. Yeah. Yep, that is where we are, but you know what? You band together, you take care of your house, you take care of your people, you take care of the people who need taken care of, and uh, we will come out the other side of this. Mm Mm-hmm. On the backs of human compassion and common fucking sense. Wear Um, a damned mask, social distance, wash your fucking hands that that's like that that's all i gotta say and the thing is if anyone has the urge to say like are you just gonna blindly believe what the cdc tells you and the answer is yeah in this case the CDC because here's said- the thing my oh. ability to google does not trump the overwhelmingly huge number of doctors that work for them they spend how much money on disease research a year? How many hundreds of millions or billions of dollars go into disease research? If you fucking Google a disease, odds are you're going to find stuff that they have researched and found and discovered. So, yeah, my ability to Google shit is not better than the experts who have spent their lives studying this. That, that Saying, hey, that's your, how this works. That meme your friend posted on Facebook unsourced with any of the the numbers they're trying to throw around is not a reliable source of information. Yeah. QAnon is not a source. A screen cap of someone else's Facebook post is not a source. Like check your sources, find reliable sources. Just, you, you, you know, guys, again, we, we come back to common fucking sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I think we're about at the point of wrap up. I am Katie. You can find me all over the social medias as well as on YouTube and Twitch at Kiaxe. That is K I A X E T. I also do a number of other things. I talk about them on my social medias and uh, I play in bronze. <laughs> so, that says a lot. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the underscore rage underscore nerd. Also uh, follow Decima Overwatch. That is the team that I coach for. Uh, we're in kind of a rebuilding process right now. Um, just kind of changing a couple parts in the team. Uh, but I'm very excited about what, you know, comes next. Um, check us out. Follow for updates on when we're playing in tournaments and everything. I super believe in you, Tad Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. 
As always, supporting our sponsor supports us, so head over to fredhebakes.com, fredhebakes.com, and use coupon code on the point for 20% off your entire order of those wonderful brown sugar buddies and the soon-to-arrive maple brown sugar buddies. Treat yourself. We could absolutely use it in this environment. And as always, we end with uh, all of the important things. Stay inside if you are able. Wear a mask anytime you walk out your front door. I don't care if it's just to get the mail. Wear a mask. Support your essential workers. If you are an essential worker, thank you so much. Support your essential workers. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Black LGBTQIA lives matter. Black lives matter. Arrest the cops who murdered Breonna Taylor. Support your protesters. Protest if you're able. Wear a mask at your protests. Support your protesters. If you are not able to be there yourself, there are a myriad of other ways you can protest. A quick Google search or a search into the Black Lives Matter hashtag will tell you how. Take care of each other, because that's the only way we're getting through this. Stay safe. We love you. Anything else, friend? No, that just about covers it. All right. Let's see nine.